Hey everyone, welcome to a special series from Dev Radio where we're going to look at a really interesting toolkit that I'm excited to see get on this channel. I've tried it hands on myself. I'm really excited to get on one of the team members who's working on it to get in and just show you what it's all about through an entire series of videos. So as always, we got Matt Calder with us. Hey Matt, how you doing? Doing good. This is going to be cool. Yeah, really cool. We got to see a little behind the scenes, so we are pretty excited about this. So today we got Samir with us. Samir, how are you? Hi. Very and good. Samir, this thing is just too cool. Um, I, I saw it on GitHub. I pulled it down. Minimal changes, and they're well-documented that I was able to make, and I had it running, and I've never done anything with GraphQL before. I've done a lot of REST stuff, but GraphQL is completely different. I've done a little bit of Blazor, but this also has some pretty interesting Blazor components. So it's kind of nice to get started and get moving pretty quickly. And I, I know I, I want to get out of your way because I know you got a lot of really cool hands-on technical stuff to show us. But Samir... Um, what can you tell us about this um, GraphQL and Blazor toolkit? Uh, sure, Sydney. So uh, I'm, I'm Samir Doshi, and I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft working in healthcare. And one of the things that I often saw with customers uh, was customers had analysis paralysis on how to get started with a modern secure stack. Um, so if they're working with a stack they're familiar with, they're good to go. Uh, if they're trying to decide on building a new app from scratch, there's a lot of talk and a lot of you know, board meetings and uh, um, discussion on do we use React, do we use Blazor, what should we use for a backend, and that ends up taking a, a long time to resolve. And what ends up happening is the stakeholder who initially wanted the app never gets their app for for weeks and weeks and weeks, and that's not a fun experience for anyone. Uh, so what we did with this kit is we put together a starter pack that you can get started with in less than an hour. You don't need admin privileges or anything like that. Uh, and you can have it up and running in Azure in a production site and have it be secure from the start. Uh, so the experience that you described where you're able to just clone it down and get started, that's exactly what we're going for. Uh, and I'll, I'll walk you through how to get you there. All right. So yeah, let's 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 look at that technical walkthrough because again, I think people are going to be really excited about what you have to show. Awesome. Uh, so what we wanted to do was we wanted to use modern stack. So we're going we're going to use a Blazor front end app, uh, complete client side code, uh, and GraphQL as our back end API. Um, and what we've done on the repo, if you go to the GitHub repo, we've got the starter kit here. Uh, we have just a plethora of instructions on what to do. Uh, so these instructions run the, the gamut from getting this fully deployed into your Azure subscription to the very, very minimalist, here's what you need to get it working on your local machine. Uh, and then take it to the next level and get it working on Azure so that you've got something you can show to your stakeholder. Uh, and that's really what we want you to do is right there in the meeting where the stakeholder is present, pull down the starter kit, get started, and start showing your stakeholder exactly what your app can look like. Uh, so in this instructions, we've got um, instructions for creating your, your deployment, like your static website uh, that you're gonna run this in. We've got instructions for creating all of the Azure AD resources that you'll need. And again, you don't need to be an admin in order to do this. Um, and then we have uh, the actual code to run the project. So. Without further ado, let me show you what that looks like. And I'll show you the only changes that you actually need to make to get this running. Okay. So, so here's Visual Studio. I've pulled down the project and I'm following the instructions that are included in that readme. Uh, and they are very simple. And let me just walk through. If I go over to get changes, we'll see the only things that I changed are the two app settings files uh, within the project. And those app settings files uh, have been changed so that they include values from my Azure Active Directory. Uh, and they're, they are very, very simple. And you can see exact samples of how to do that right there on the GitHub. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and, and hit F5. So the only things I've changed are those configurations. I'm going to hit F5 to launch uh, the applications. We'll see what that looks like. And we'll hop back into uh, Visual Studio for just a brief second to give you an overview of the projects. 
And it's pretty interesting because, um, like you said, the instructions on that GitHub website walk you through, okay, in this JSON file, change these settings. And in this JSON file, change those settings. And it even has links to tutorials if you've never registered an application in Azure AD. So it's pretty comprehensive. We are. Uh, so what the application will do is it, it launches in two pieces. One is this banana cake pop. This is our GraphQL backend. Uh, and I know we're all interested to go into it, especially with a name like Banana Cake Pop, uh, but we'll we'll leave it alone for a second and go to the front end piece, which is, uh, as you've seen, it's the boilerplate uh, Blazor app. And and just so everyone knows, I've got, I've got my screen here in dark mode. Um, so the boilerplate bootstrap Blazor app, uh, it has authentication enabled. Let's go ahead and let's just click on fetch data from GraphQL and see what that looks like. All right. So the app is going to authenticate because we want to be secure. It is fetching data from GraphQL and it happened really quickly because it's happening locally. Uh, and it outputted the response. So this response is from my API app. Uh, so it's got a, kind of a heavy text. And then it also says my ID here. Uh, we also have an access token, which is pretty cool. So that's pretty much single sign-on with your Azure AD account. So that was cloud-based, but the API you're calling is local, and both the front end and API are using um, AD um, for security. Is that correct? That's right. Uh, this is a, a secured end-to-end, -end. so you cannot access the API without getting an access token. Uh, and we put this access token here so that if you're working with that IDE that we were on a little bit earlier, Banana Cake Pop, uh, you have easy access to it. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that, yes, you can get started quickly, but we don't want you to get thrown off later on in uh, your development journey by having to then implement security. We want security to be built in from the start. Um, so I know we're all interested to walk through some of the code, and what I wanted to do is give a brief overview, uh, and then we'll walk through the code in a later session. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stop the debug here. And I've got two solutions, Blazor UI, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's the UI component. And I have the GraphQL API. And that is it. Those are the only two projects within my solution. Uh, both of them can run independently. And like I said before, uh, when you pull down this code from GitHub, you only need to modify configuration in both to get started. But we've structured them so that it's easy to make modifications to either one so that you can quickly get feedback from your customers. Because we want you to get value from the starter pack ASAP so that your stakeholders can get the value that they're looking for. Uh, so, so Sydney, without uh, further ado, I think what we should do uh, is uh, think about what we'll do in kind of our next session. So the two yeah. things that I want to think about doing are let's, let's talk about how it is that we'll modify the UI. Uh, let's take it past the boilerplate and take it into something a little bit more customized. Yeah. And then in another session, let's also modify the back end. Uh, and walk you through a little bit of what GraphQL has, because that might be new to a lot of people. And if you've never seen it, it is awesome, and it will change your life. Yeah, so the, yeah, let's let's do a series out of this. So we'll do a video where we go into Blazor UI, modify that UI like you're talking about. Um, for those who are familiar with Blazor and want to see some cool tricks, we'll do that. And for those who are new to Blazor, we'll definitely um, have enough information to uh, help you out and point you in the right places. And the same thing for the back end. Uh, we'll look at GraphQL, which I'm very interested in um, as someone who hasn't had a lot of experience with it. And um, look at how all this is built up and how, like Samir, like you said, you can customize it. So Samir... Again, looking forward to the rest of the sessions in this series. We're definitely going to get dig, dig. We're definitely instead of get. <laughs> we're definitely going to dig deep into this toolkit and have a lot of fun. So, Samir, Matt, I'll see you in the next session. See you then. Thanks.